Hello and welcome to today's Tech Corner with Assemble Systems. My name is Kenneth Swanson and I'm a customer engineer here at Assemble. In today's session I'm going to walk you through how to properly set up your model in Assemble to successfully validate, investigate, and condition model data. So one of the first things we want to do when we start to investigate a model is determine what kind of trades you're going to be working with it, whether it's architecture, structural, electrical, MEP work. So in this example today, we have a model that has all three of the structure, mechanical, and architectural incorporated into one model, and we can start to break it up and make sure that each of these trades has the correct information that they need to be successful. To start off, since I'm going to be breaking this up by those specific trades, I'm going to get rid of some of the noise in the model that we're, we might be working with some other point in the estimate. So for something like our site work, topography, and foliage, we might be interested in removing those and making sure that we're only going to be working with information related to modeled items that are going to be taken off. So I'm going to go ahead and hide those. By default, we can see these categories, but there's some information that sometimes gets lost in this process. So for example, we come over with generic models or some masses. Generic models can still be used and classified with your other data using assemble properties. So in this model example, we have some things like doors and desks, printers, some casework. And we can add information as assemble properties to further classify these into those buckets because we're not going to be having the same model properties brought in. We're not going to be having those groupings. These kinds of property context is also how we can start to sort data in other groupings. Things like assembly codes and cost codes throughout the model, when we bring in these, this information for our CAD system, we're going to by default have some examples of these cost codes. So in our type information, we can go find that this is just in a plumbing division. Each of these will have its own classification and be sortable and filterable based on those. Or we can start to use some more precise information for our model, like for example, a function for our doors, windows, and walls. So in the specific door, we can go take a look at, it says that it's an exterior door, looks like it should be an exterior door. But in our assembly code, it's classified as interior. So this is something we might be interested in going back and saying that we want to go put this into our exterior doors enclosure rather than our interior. Modify that and make sure that that context is correct. Or another example is in our MEP work, we can do a grouping based off our classification. So when we open up that system classification, we can start to see that all of our MEP work will be selectable separate from our architecture and structural because those will come under this not assigned tag. That not assigned tag is a common way that we can see that objects might not fit into the current category and group. So in this case, that not assigned can be very easily go and sort out because it's not going to be having the system classification if that's how we're going to be describing our information. So for example, we can go hide that and just be left with everything from the mechanical context. Once we have some little context added like that, we can use that grouping to describe some of those better examples. So things like custom assemble properties or level might be used to describe how we're breaking up this information. Finding our exact quantity of duct fittings or pipe fittings on our first floors. Very quick way to go sort out this data even though this model started as multiple trades and it would be very hard to group by default into these specific levels. But starting to validate this information using that property is a very strong piece. So one thing we might be interested in doing is grabbing all this information and just giving it a general grouping like MEP work. So we'll call that in our bid package. And now later on we'll be able to go and re-access all our MEP without having to manually go and find which groups these come under. I'm going to bring the rest of our model back. And though items might look correct at first glance, they might be modeled as items that are single units when they need to be broken up or confirmed that they're supposed to be one unit. So two examples we see for this fairly often are precast panels and floor slabs. So when we select these walls, though it looks like we're modeling this across all those three floors, that is correct in the context of this object. While other interior partitions might be grouped by level by level, we can confirm that 
in our properties, it's just it's a precast panel, and we can go find any kind of type and instance data that would support that information. One of the easiest ways that we can go find specific information like that is through the use of our visibility settings. Visibility settings gives us a tool that lets us find precise values in common properties. So in this model, we might have all this data associated, but we want to find, for example, our interior partitions on a certain floor. We can go break that up and just describe a couple of common properties to say that this is the values that we want. So all of our interior walls, and then add that level context to find that value of second floor. Update that, and now that that rule is created, it will only show us those common properties. And then this can be further broken down into something like type mark. So we can make sure that each of these walls is within the correct, correct mark, and get those quantities at a glance, and know that we're only going to be working with our interior second floor walls based on our model information. But we do have to be careful that when we use these visibility settings, because if a property does not exist within a group, so for example, if a wall does not have a specific phase or material, so if we want to go find phase created, new, anything that does not have a value within this won't appear even if it'll be within that new. And since that's an assemble pro a model property that we can modify with an assemble, we might be interested in going into our wall category and confirming that all of these have the correct phase. Using a couple of these either visibility rules or filters and groups, we can break our model into chunks and, and make sure that our trades are broken up into views. So for example, if we go in and take that bid package, now even though we have the whole model loaded, we can regroup that, filter down to our MEP work, and save that for use later, whether it's in takeoff or field work. So we can go call this MEP systems. And anyone will be able to go in and find just the context of the areas they're going to be interested in working in so that we can investigate just that piece at a time. So thank you again for joining us today. As you saw in today's presentation, it's very easy to set up your model and inventory for downstream use and assemble. If you have any questions or would like help with any of the workflows shown today, please email us at support at assemblesystems.com. I hope to see you on another Assemble Tech Corner.